are we've put a fair bit of work into a system that doesn't do too much just yet. It looks nice, we've got our swords which we can equip, but there's no change to our player's appearance, we can't unequip it, it doesn't add up any stats or anything like that. So in this tutorial we're going to get things set up so that your player's appearance changes as you equip items and you also have the ability to send those items back to your equipment inventory if you don't want them anymore. Let's get started. All right, so first off, we're gonna head into our scripts folder and open up our equipped slot script. Getting our player's appearance to change is probably gonna be the easiest thing that we're going to do so far, so let's begin there. First off, up at the top of our script, under our slot appearance, we're gonna create a new serialized field. This one will be private, and we're just going to make this one an image called player display image. Now that our script has the image that we want to use, we just have to actually apply it. So we can scroll down to our equip gear method here. And essentially just right near the bottom, before we tell the slot that it's in use and can no longer accept items, we're just going to update the display image. Now to do that, all we need to do is get our player display image. And we just want to access specifically the sprite on him. And we're going to make it equal to our item sprite. Now when we get back to Unity, we can click on our inventory canvas. We're going to open up the equipment menu, go into our player equipment panel, and the second one as well, get into that center panel, and here's where we have our player's image. And what we're going to do now is make a series of overlapping images. So I'm going to come up to my center panel, and I'm going to add a UI image, and I'm just going to call this one shirt. Anyways, with our shirt, we can now head over to our inspector, go to the image tab here, and we're just going to want to actually get the an image that we want to use for his shirt. In my case, I will be using this white shirt here. Now, if I zoom in, you'll see that the shirt is definitely a little bit small. Now, we could just drag this until it looks about right, but probably the best way to do it is I'm going to grab my player image, which I sized up to 350 by 350, and I'll do now do the same thing to my shirt, just making it 350 by 350. We've got a pretty nice fit there. All right, I now know that all I need to do to have my player equip different shirts is have his sprite image change, which is exactly what our script is already designed to do. So now I'll click on my left panel. Let's go to that body slot, which is where my shirt's gonna show up. And you'll notice over here in the inspector that there's a box here for the player display image. I can just grab my shirt, put it in there. And now my equipped slot will know whenever it's equipped to change the sprite for his shirt to match whatever item has just been equipped. While I'm at it here, I might just make these match up. So rather than calling that shirt, I'll make it body. All right, with that done, we want to actually test this out. So first off, in my center panel on body, I'm just going to unequip my shirt by adding in a empty sprite. That way I can actually tell when a shirt's been equipped. I then need to create my shirt item. I'm just gonna make a duplicate of my sword here, which I'll rename. At this point, I'll just open up my sprite render and select an image for how it will appear on the map. I'll give it a name, quantity of one, pick what sprite I'll be using, give it a description, and finally, don't forget to say what item type this is, in this case, body. Now when I get into Unity, I can collect the sword and shirt. Both will make their way to my inventory. Click it once to select it, click it again, and it shows up in my inventory, as well as on my player. All right, now that that's up and running, we can actually just hook this up for all the rest of our items. And so you can go to your center panel, grab our body and actually just duplicate that for every item you're going to have. And then you can just go through and rename them to match all of your slots. With that done, we can now attach those to all of our individual slots. So head slot, make sure that I attach the head. A little bit of fine tuning will need to be done is at the moment all of these will be set to follow our body placement and so if you put a hat in here it will show up on his body and you'll just need to actually click on the head and make sure to move it up so that it sizes over his head. All right now before we add our next step which will be sending the items back to our inventory when we don't want them anymore, I just want to make one little fix. Somewhere along the line a little error made it into my code that may have been copied into your game and that is just that I can collect these items I can right click to drop them back on my map, but if I were to pick that sword up right now, it would actually crash my Unity. 
And the reason for that is just because I go to the item panel and then click on that item slot, you'll notice that it thinks it's full at the moment. What we need to do is quickly go into our equipment slot script. And all we need to do is make sure that this bool is full gets turned to false when we drop an item. This happens down here in our empty slot line. And so down here we'll just go is full equals false. And that should fix that problem. With that done, we can now collect our items, click them to equip them to our player. But when we click them in our equip slots, nothing happens. So we're going to head over to our equip slot script to make that happen. And at the very top, beside mono behavior, we're going to type in I pointer click handler. Now for the moment, it's not going to like that at all. What we're doing though is creating an interface that will determine what happens when we point and click and how to handle that. And so now we just need to actually tell our script what to do. And so we'll come down below all of our variables, but above our equip gear. Here we'll make a public void method called on pointer click. And then in brackets, the argument we're gonna pass in is just pointer event data called event data. Now again, it's not liking it at the moment. We can just right click this pointer event data, go to quick actions. And if we put using Unity event systems, it will add that line up here in our using lines. And you'll notice that both of those squiggly lines are gone. So here's where we tell our method what to do when it receives data from the button. So we'll type event data dot button is equal to pointer event data dot input button left, which essentially just means whenever you push the left click. And of course, we'll also add an on right click which will essentially be the exact same thing, except that we'll just change the input button to right. Now up here on the on left click, we're just gonna create a new method called on left click, and we'll create an on right click down here as well. Now it won't like those because we haven't made those methods yet, so let's do that. We'll make a void on left click and a void on right click as well. All right, with that done, we've now set things up so that we can actually click on stuff. But in order to be able to test this, we need to actually have something happen when we do that clicking. So let's head back up to our variables at the top of the script. And I wanna set things up so that we can show when an item's been selected. So we'll make a serialized field private game object. And this is just gonna be our selected shader to show when an item has been clicked on. We're also gonna make a second serialized field. This one will be a private Bool called this item selected, which will just register when the item has been selected. All right, with those two variables, we can now make it so when we click an item, it gets selected and it knows it's been selected. So let's go down to on left click. So when we left click on something, we're just gonna wanna perform a quick check first of all, to see whether or not this item is already selected and also whether or not this slot is in fact in use. Then we'll want to unequip gear. This is a method we haven't actually made yet, so let's go ahead and make it. Below our equip gear method, we'll just make another public void called unequip gear. And for the moment, we'll just leave that empty and fill that in later. Now this handles if the item is, if the slot is already selected and in use. However, if that's not true, we want to get our selected shader and we just want to set active to be true, meaning we just want to turn on the shader to show it's been selected and we also want to let it know that it's been selected so this item selected equals true so it now knows it's been selected so that if we click it again it can do something different we've got enough now that we can test this so back in unity now if we go into our player equipment panel head down to let's start with the right panel and click on any of our slots like say our main hand we can now look in our equipped slot and right now it just wants to know what the selected shader is so we can open that up grab our selected icon and put it in there. We'll then wanna go through and do this for each of our slots. All right, with that set up, we can now equip some items. And when we go to click on them, you'll notice that they are in fact registering the click and selecting. Obviously they don't deselect or do anything, but that's our next step. So in order to make our slots capable of deselecting, we're gonna have to start by making a serialized field private sprite called empty sprite, which is just the sprite that will replace this item once it's no longer in the slot. We can then scroll down to our unequip gear method. And now we just wanna update our slot image. So we'll do this to begin by making sure that the data for this item sprite is equal to empty sprite. We'll then get the actual image sprite on the slot and make it the empty sprite. 
At that point, we can take the name of this slot and just turn it back on so that instead of a sprite image, we will be seeing the name of the slot. And finally, we just want to make sure that our player's display image is also empty so that we know we've taken the item off of it. This one's relatively easy to test. First of all, under our left panel, I'm just going to shift click all four slots. And for the empty sprite, we can click that and then just select whatever your empty sprite is. I'll then do the same thing for my right panel. All right, so now we can equip our gear. We can right click it to select it, right click it again, and you'll notice the slot disappeared, and so did my hand. However, we still need to deselect the slot and have the item appear back in our inventory. All right, so for this final step, we're going to have to return to our equipped slot script one more time. Now, in order for items to be sent from our equipped slots back over to the equipment inventory, we're going to have to go through our inventory manager, which does all of this communication. So I'll create a new private variable called inventory manager. We now need to tell this script how to talk to the inventory manager. So we'll bring back our start method, and we're just going to let it know that the inventory manager is equal to, and I'm going to do a game object search. So I'll put game object dot find. Now my script is on the inventory canvas, so I'll type that name in here. And then on the inventory canvas, we just need to get the component called inventory manager. So first off, let's go to our on left click method here. And we're just going to add one line down here in our else statement. So essentially, whenever we click on an item, we want to deselect all other items. And down here under on right click, at the moment, we aren't going to do anything fancy on clicking right. Let's just make it a shortcut to unequip gear. So you could click something to select it, click it again to have it go over to your other inventory, or if you just right click it, it will automatically unequip it. Now we're going to go down to our equip gear method here, and I just want to add a quick little safe check. So essentially, if we go to equip a sword, but there's already a sword in our inventory, we want to quickly unequip the old sword before we put the new one in. Otherwise, we're going to run into trouble. All right, and to make that happen, we're just going to go if slot in use. So meaning if there's already something in this slot, then unequip gear. So now if we go to equip something but the slot's already in use, we'll unequip the current gear before writing in the data for the new gear. And finally, we can now actually make the gear get unequipped. So first of all, we're going to go inventory manager dot deselect all slots as after we equip something, we just want to no longer have that slot selected. And finally, the brains of this one is just where we actually send the data back over to the other equipment inventory. And to do that once more, we're going to go through the inventory manager. Remember, it's handling all of the data that travels between inventories. And essentially, we just want to call the add item script and then send over the data. So we'll want it to know the name of the item we're sending. Now we don't need to send over quantity because the quantity will always be one when we're dealing with equipment. And, and then we'll also send over the item sprite, item description, and finally, the item, the item type. We've now got things working nearly perfectly. I can double click items to s equip them. I can unequip them with a double click or a right click. However, there's a couple problems. One, the slots are not deselecting properly. And also, I'm occasionally having to click on an item many times before it deselects. Let's fix that. We go into our equipped slot on left click. We do have things set up so that we're asking the inventory manager to deselect all slots. However, there's a little problem with that line of code. So if we right click this deselect all slots and go to declaration, it will take us to our inventory manager where that's happening. And at the moment, deselect deselects all item slots, deselects all equipment slots, but it doesn't do anything with our equipped slots. And so we're going to add this for loop for a third time. This time we'll just change all of the equipment slots to equipped slots. Now, of course, it doesn't like that because we haven't created that variable. So you can scroll to the very top. And up here where we have our arrays for item slots and equipment slots, we're also going to make a public equipped slot array. And we'll call this one, of course, equipped slot. At this point, all should be well, but I just made a little error. If you scroll down here to our for loop, You'll notice that both of these are red and that it's telling us that they are inaccessible due to their protection level. So I'm just going to right click, go to declaration. And the reason for that is because we made them private and they need to be public so that this other script can talk to them. All right, let's save that. All right, back in Unity, when we click on our inventory canvas now, you'll see that we now have a spot for our equipped slots. I'm just going to lock the inspector here. 
I'll then open up the player equipment panel. Let's get our left panel. And I'm going to shift click our four equipment slots and drag them over. I'll then do the same thing for the right panel. Shift click the four slots and drag them over to our equipped slots. All right, now we can collect all of our gear. We can double click it to equip it. We can click it here and you'll notice it's unselecting things. And now when I click on the shirt, it unclicks the sword and I can go back and forth nicely. There we go, things are working pretty good. At this point though, it's purely cosmetic. All we are doing is changing the equipment on our player. It's not actually changing the way he looks in the game and it's not changing his stats. So those things will be still to come. Hope to see you in the next video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers. <laughs>